recognizes the gentleman from Rhode Island. Madam Speaker, I ask unanimous consent that all members have five legislative days to revise and extend their remarks and include extraneous materials on H.R. 3285. Without objection. Madam Speaker, I yield myself as much time as I may consume. The gentleman is recognized. Madam Speaker, I rise in strong support of H.R. 3285, the 21st Century President Act. A century ago, women in this country had only barely won the right to vote. Today, we have the first female vice president, a female speaker of the House, and record numbers of women running for federal office. Although we still have a long way to go, both in equality and representation, our country's government is growing closer to finally representing our nation's brilliant diversity. Our laws must reflect the fact that a president and their spouse can be of any gender. That concept may have seemed impossible a few decades ago, but today it is thankfully a true and real possibility. Currently, our criminal code defines a spouse in the immediate family of a president as, quote, the wife of a former president during his lifetime and the widow of a former president until her death, implying that the spouse must be female and the president must be male in order for a threat against a former president's family to be treated as a crime. This completely disregards the fact that a president may be female and the president's spouse may not be. This does not reflect the progress we've made in this country. I'm proud to vote yes for this bill, which passed out of the chamber by a voice vote last Congress, and encourage all my colleagues to vote for its passage to support equality in our highest branch. Thank you again to my colleague and friend, Congressman Pocan, for introducing this bill and being such a strong advocate for it. I look forward to seeing it made law, and I reserve the balance of my time. The gentleman reserves the gentleman from Ohio is recognized. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I yield myself such time as I may consume. The gentleman is recognized. Thank you, Madam Speaker. The bill is simple. Under current law, it's a crime to issue threats against former presidents, immediate family, and certain other persons. Specifically, this bill replaces the words wife and widow with spouse and surviving spouse. A spouse. Uh, both major parties have had women run for president, and this change makes sense. But while we are dedicating floor time to consider this minor technical change, President Biden's inflation has hit a 40-year high. His border crisis has left our nation woefully unsecure. And left-wing defund the police actions have contributed to a crime wave that's plaguing our cities. This bill, uh, of course, this bill makes sense and should be a crime to threaten the president or first family. No one disagrees with that. But this body needs to get its priorities straight. Where is the legislation to address the crisis at the border? or address the crime wave, or to do anything meaningful about inflation or the price at the pump. The bill is fine, but I hope that House Democrats will spend some time addressing the real issues that face the American people. I reserve, Madam Speaker. Gentlemen, from Burrowling is recognized. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I now yield the gentleman from Wisconsin, the author of this legislation, uh, Mark Pocan, three minutes. The gentleman is recognized. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Um, I rise today in support of the 21st Century President Act, a bipartisan bill which I'm glad to have authored and introduced. Federal law hasn't caught up to where progress in this country is, specifically when it comes to who a future president can be. This bill would change federal law that refers to a president's spouse. Sections that currently refer to a president's wife or widow would be changed to spouse in recognition of the fact that in the 21st century, the president could either be a woman or a person from the LGBTQ community. Without this change to the US code, for example, the law that makes it a crime to threaten, kill, kidnap, or inflict bodily harm upon the president or the president's family would fail to include a future female or gay president and their potential spouse. This change is long overdue. Someday there could be a President Kamala Harris, or Elizabeth Warren, or Amy Klobuchar, or Tammy Baldwin, or Pete Buttigieg, or President Nikki Haley, or Kristi Noem, or Liz Cheney. The words in law matter. It is critically important that federal law recognizes that we could one day have a president who is not a man, or even a straight man, and that they and their families deserve equal protection under the law. I am glad that this bill passed the House by voice vote last Congress and that it has now been voted on the Judiciary Committee twice on a voice vote. I would like to personally thank Chairman Nadler and the Judiciary Committee for their support of this important bipartisan bill, and I urge all of my colleagues to once again support the 21st Century President Act. I yield back the balance of my time. The gentleman yields back. The gentleman reserves, and the gentleman from Ohio is recognized. Um, we're, we're fine. We, we yield back. You yield back. The gentleman yields back. The gentleman from Rhode Island is recognized. Madam Speaker, H.R. 3285, the 21st Century President Act, does indeed take our criminal code into the 21st century by removing gendered terms and assumptions about who can be president from our criminal code. It passed 
As I said on a voice vote last Congress, I ask my colleagues to again stand with me in supporting this legislation, and I yield back the balance of my time. The gentleman yields back. The question is, will the House suspend the rules and pass H.R. 3285 as amended? Amended. Those in favor say aye. Those opposed say no. In the opinion of the chair, two-thirds being in the affirmative, the rules are suspended. The bill is passed, and without objection, the motion to reconsider is laid on the table. For what purpose does the gentleman from Rhode Island seek recognition? Madam Speaker, I move to suspend the rules and pass H.R. 6538, the active shooter alert of 2022, as amended. The clerk will report the title of the bill. Union calendar number 